Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. In this session, we'll be talking about telecommunications, the internet, and wireless technology. It might seem rather technical, but for us, for our purposes, we don't, we don't have to really know the intricate details. What we have to know is about the promise, the advantages, the downsides of each type of technology. And then we would have to choose which one is most suitable for our organization. So the end part of this uh, chapter would be the ability to choose which is the most feasible technology for our purposes. First, we'll have to know about the components of networks and key networking technologies. First, about the trends in networking and communications. The first trend would be convergence, meaning that people would use just one single uh, network, not separated between telephone networks and computer networks, but this would converge into one network. And then there's a trend for using broadband connections. Broadband means the uh, channel that is used to transmit the data is very wide. Uh, the, uh, let's say 100 megabytes or megabits or 200 megabits per second would be considered uh, broadband. And uh, it could be both cable-based or wireless broadband. Then the next thing we should know about is computer networks. Basically, computer networks connect two or more computers, and then it consists of client and server computers. The server computers would be at the middle of the network, which would be connecting uh, between client computers. And then you have the network interfaces inside of the computers itself. You have the connection medium, whether it's wireless or is uh, wired. And then you have the network operating system, which would be uh, kind of like an operating system for your computer, but this is for the server. And you have hubs, switches, and routers. So if we put it diagrammically, it would look like this. First, the internet. Okay, the internet would be accessed through a router and then the transmission would go to a switch, which would connect to a server. Inside the server, the hardware part is the network uh, interface. Here, it's a card actually, an electronic card uh, uh, acting kind of like a modem, which would be connecting between the computer and the switch and the operating system for the server, or the network operating system. Then you have another switch here, which would be connecting with the client computers. In each of the client computers, there would also be a network card. Now in large companies, there could be hundreds of local area networks, not just individual computers. So each local area network might host uh, tens or hundreds of computers and there are hundreds of local area networks linked to the central corporate network. And then of course you would need very powerful servers. It could be a server that uh, functions to cater for the website, for the intranet, extranet, as well for the backend systems. You would also need mobile wireless LANs so here, if we uh, talk about LANs, previously it's mostly wired, but now you have Wi-Fi networks which serve the function of a local area network, but uh, it's without cables. You have video conferencing systems, you have telephone network systems, and you have wireless cell phone systems. So these would all be utilized in the company. For instance, you have a telephone service provider from Telcom, for instance, uh, then you would, might have a PABX system, 
which connects to other phones as well as mobile phones. This might be separate from the computer system. The computer system utilizes the internet, which would be accessed through the internet service provider to the uh, company or uh, to the company's servers, or it could also go to directly uh, the clients in the uh, company. Okay. But the convergence part that we were talking previously would be converging, would be trying to integrate between these telephone service providers with the computer uh, systems here. That's why uh, now you can uh, phone or make a video call using your phone, but through the internet. It's called uh, voice over IP, for instance. And then there are several key digital networking technologies. You have client and server computing, which we just uh, mentioned about. You have a technology called packet switching. This is basically slicing a message into several packets and then sending it along different communication uh, channels like this. So you have the message here. You cut the message into smaller pieces. And then each piece is sent through a different network, a different path. The second one through here, the third one through here, for instance. And then upon the uh, delivery, when it's received by the recipient, it's reassembled, put together again. Okay. So what's the benefit of this? It's more efficient in terms of, uh, for instance, uh, it, it could be faster. If there's a congestion here, there's a lot, a lot of traffic here, then the packet could go, another package could go through another uh, path. And also, for instance, if there's a broken node here, uh, there's uh, a, a network that does not work here, then all the messages could avoid this path and then they would be going through different paths to make sure that uh, all the packages are put together here. Now, it means that it's more efficient, not just that, but it's also more robust. So it's also uh, more sturdy, more reliable. And then you have TCP IP. So these are basically the protocols, the rules that govern the transmission of information between two points. And for the internet, it's called transmission control protocol and slash internet protocol or TCP IP. Then uh, we mentioned about several uh, types of networks. You have LAN, local area network. Uh, if it's basically in one area, if it's in a wider area, we would call it WAN or wide area network. If it's an even broader area, uh, we'd call it metropolitan area network. Or if it's in a, a wide area, but rather limited, you can call it a campus area network, for instance. Uh, and here, the next one would be about signals. There's a digital signal versus an analog signal. So here's uh, what we mean by that. Okay, the computer always works based on zeros and ones. Zero means nothing. So you can see here, uh, this is the graph. And one, suddenly it becomes uh, available. It becomes one and then zero again, one again. So that's digital. And that's the way computers work. And then after coming out of the computer, it goes through a modem, which changes the digital signal into analog signals. So it's like, uh, a logarithmic signal. So you can see here, it's uh, not like this anymore, but it's more smoother. You have more variables here, not just zero and one. And this might be going through uh, copper cables. Uh, 
through the telephone line, for instance. And then it's captured by a modem again. And the modem here would be uh, translating the analog signal into a digital signal, which would be processed by the computer. And then here you can see the types of media, the, the types of cables. You have twisted pair wire, you have coaxial cables. So th this is uh, uh, basically used for uh, local area networks, for instance, for the coaxial cable, twisted pair cable uh, is also uh, quite commonly used, for instance, uh, in telephone lines. And then you have fiber optics. These are the most, uh, the, the, the most, uh, the, the more modern type of cable. These two would be transmitting electricity. Fiber optics would be transmitting light, not electricity anymore. And this would be automatically digital. And then you have wireless transmission media and devices uh, through satellites, through uh, cellular towers. And here's uh, a mention about transmission speed, how fast data is transmitted through a certain uh, media. And then you have the internet, which is actually the uh, most extensive network in the world because everyone is connected now to the uh, internet. And these are the type of internet connections that you can have. The fastest one, okay, uh, you, you have several alternatives right now. And even uh, using wireless right now, you can have uh, a very wide, uh, band. Here's an example of the internet network architecture. First, you have a backbone here. The backbone would be the widest uh, bandwidth that you can have. It uses a fiber optics cable underneath the ocean for instance, connecting between the United States to Singapore, for instance. And then uh, from here, from the backbone, uh, let's say it's uh, off the strait of uh, between Singapore and, and Jakarta, for instance. Now there's a metropolitan area uh, network here, which connects to the backbone, let's say in Jakarta. And then from there, it would uh, be divided into regional hosts. Uh, there's a host in uh, West Java, there's a host in Yogyakarta, and from the regional host, it would be connected to an ISP, Internet Service Provider. This ISP would be able to, uh, to service several companies. Uh, for instance, it might be uh, Telkom, for instance, or it might be Citranet, for instance. Now, this would be connected to our homes or connected to a company or the campus through the internet service provider. Next, we have uh, uh, some th slides on the internet addressing and architecture. So basically, when you connect a device to the internet, you would be getting an internet protocol address, whether it's using a mobile phone or a computer, and it might be something like this, 207-462501119. Okay. So that's how uh, Google, for instance, knows that uh, where you are located. And it also limits, for instance, uh, there's a certain video on Hulu and you try to open it, it sees that you're not from the United States, you're from Indonesia and you are not allowed, that area is not allowed to access Hulu because you would be assigned this IP address. And then the domain name system, this is uh, basically the system uh, which governs the use of uh, 
.co.id for instance or .ac.id or .com and so on. So uh, the original uh, format is actually numbers like this. So the IP address using the domain name system, the IP address of the server that has the website in it is converted into a name that you can read like this, for instance. Okay, you have a computer here. The computer uses the domain name uh, sales.google.com. Okay, and then the domain name here, uh, it's called the sales one. It's, it's a third level domain. And then Google here, it's a second level domain. And then com, it's a top level domain. So the DNS, the domain name system, would be converting this, the IP uh, address, the internet protocol address, into, let's say, computer1.sales.google.com. And then aside from that, you also have several entities that provide governance to the internet. Okay. For instance, here, uh, some examples, you have an organization, the IAB would be governing uh, the use of advertisements in the internet. ICANN would be governing the use of those uh, domain names, for instance. And now here's also a concept about net neutrality. Uh, net neutrality is about uh, for instance, you, you have an ISP here, for instance. I'll go back some slides here. Okay. The local ISP or any entity, any company that provides internet connection, uh, if they give the same uh, bandwidth in accessing uh, all the companies, all government agencies and so on, it said that the company is net neutral. But uh, if for instance, the ISP would be giving a, a faster speed when you access uh, Netflix or when you access YouTube, for instance, it means that they're not net neutral because when you access YouTube, it's faster. It might be faster than if you access a local uh, video content provider, okay. So they're not net neutral in that case. Now the discussion is whether net neutrality is good or not. Okay, should there be a legislation on whether an ISP or internet uh, provider would be giving net neutrality or not, giving the same speed of access to all the websites or not. So this is how uh, the discussion on net neutrality. So that was the first part of our discussion on uh, telecommunications, the internet and wireless technology. There would be a second part of this chapter and uh, please stay tuned. Thank you and wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.